welcome to Biomedical Engineers TV. Last video we covered classification of defibrillators. In this video we will look at synchronous defibrillation, unsynchronized defibrillation, external transcutaneous pacing and their modes. Let's begin with synchronized defibrillation. Synchronized cardioversion is a low energy shock that uses a sensor to deliver electricity that is synchronized with the peak of the QRS complex, the highest point of the R wave. When the sync option is engaged on a defibrillator and the shock button pushed, there will be a delay in the shock. During this delay, the machine reads and synchronizes with the patient's ECG rhythm. This occurs so that the shock can be delivered with or just after the peak of the R wave in the patient's QRS complex. Synchronization avoids the delivery of a low energy shock during cardiac repolarization T wave. If the shock occurs on the T wave during repolarization, there is a high likelihood that the shock can precipitate ventricular fibrillation. The most common indications for synchronized cardioversion are unstable atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, atrial tachycardia, and supraventricular tachycardia. If medications fail in the stable patient with the before mentioned arrhythmias, synchronized cardioversion will most likely be indicated. Let's move on to unsynchronized cardioversion defibrillation. Unsynchronized cardioversion defibrillation is a high energy shock, which is delivered as soon as the shock button is pushed on a defibrillator. This means that the shock may fall randomly anywhere within the cardiac cycle QRS complex. Unsynchronized cardioversion defibrillation is used when there is no coordinated intrinsic electrical activity in the heart, pulseless VT, VF, or the defibrillator fails to synchronize in an unstable patient. For cases where electrical shock is needed, if the patient is unstable and you can see the QRST complex, use low energy synchronized cardioversion. If the patient is pulseless or if the patient is unstable and the defibrillator will not synchronize, use high energy unsynchronized cardioversion defibrillation. Let's see the application of external pacing in defibrillators. The external defibrillator pacing consists of two modes, fixed mode and demand mode. Fixed rate mode pacing, in the fixed rate mode, the pace rate is set by the clinician, regardless of the patient's intrinsic heart rate. This option is preferable when the ECG signal becomes extremely noisy due to motion artifact or when the pacemaker is sometimes unable to sense the intrinsic beat. Another reason for using the fixed rate mode is to terminate tachyarrhythmia by overdriving the patient's intrinsic beat. This method has been successful in a limited number of patients. The above methods are not widely used in a clinical setting. The danger with fixed rate mode pacing is the possibility of further exacerbating the tachyarrhythmia and triggering ventricular fibrillation. Fixed rate mode does not sense the QRS complex for the R wave and may pace on the T wave, which could trigger ventricular fibrillation. In demand mode pacing, the pacer senses the patient's intrinsic heart rate and will pace if the intrinsic signal is lower than the rate programmed by the clinician. For example, if the patient's heart rate becomes slower than the prescribed setting, the pacer will send an electrical stimulus. If the pacer senses that the heart rate is faster than the pacing rate, it inhibits an electrical signal. The advantages of demand mode pacing are Competition between the pacemaker's stimuli and the intrinsic heart rate is minimized, decreasing the risk of R on T, and the number of pace pulses introduced are minimized, reducing patient discomfort. For this reason, demand mode pacing is primarily used as the default setting. During demand mode pacing, 
defibrillators detect R waves or beats. Intrinsic beats are defined as those that are generated naturally by the patient. Paced beats are defined as those that are a result of delivered pacing energy. Philips ALS defibrillators also define the paced refractory period, which is simply a period of time after the delivery of a pace pulse. I hope I kept it simple to understand the definitions of different defibrillation technique. In the last video, we will cover pacemaker, ICDs and AED. Thank you for watching Biomedical Engineers TV. See you in the next video.